This is Billionaire Mondays. Every Monday, we present you with another billionaire. Today, we're looking at 15 things you didn't know about Lakshmi Mittal. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello, Aluxers. Tired of billionaires? Neither are we. Today, we're talking about one of the most important and well-known business figures in India. He's the CEO and chairman of ArcelorMittal, one of the biggest steel-making companies in the world. His full name is Lakshmi Nuwaz Mittal, and the empire he built is now taking over the whole world. He started young in Rajasthan region in India, with an education and working for his father's company. By the time he was 26, he opened his first steel company in Indonesia on his own. The family business was passed on to his siblings and is now doing very well financially, but he has no connections to it. He's happily married with two beautiful and successful children, so we can safely say he's a self-made billionaire. Ten years ago, he was one of Forbes' top three richest people in the world and one of the richest people of Asia. Now at 68 years old, he's still among the richest but a little more focused on his family and passing the business on to them. Since he's such an important figure and a billionaire, we're going to dig in a little deeper into his business and private life and see what else there is to know about him. And we bet you're curious to find out some more too. So let's get started. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. Number 1. For more than 10 years, he was living on a $250 per month salary. It's never easy to climb up the social ladder. Most billionaires that are featured on our channel have made it in their own right, and for that to happen, a lot of sacrifices have to be made along the way. It will pay off in the long run, but while you're at it, it might seem excruciating. Until he made it big in the steel industry, Lakshmi Mittal was living on a $250 per month salary, which is not a lot of money considering that he was a business owner and could have easily went on to work for his father's factory. He bought a few mills in Indonesia and lived there for a couple of years until he got a few leads and opportunities. Business is tough, and if you don't stick to it, it'll never pay off. Number 2. He paid $55 million for his daughter's wedding. When you have plenty of money to spend like Mittal does, it'll go towards family. They are the only ones worth spending millions on, and some really do spoil their loved ones. Lakshmi Mittal has two children, a son, Aditya Mittal, and a daughter, Vanisha Mittal. For Vanisha's wedding to Amid Bhatia, he paid $55 million so that everything looked picture perfect. The wedding took place in France, at Versailles and Garden in Paris, a very fancy and luxurious venue for the young couple. They flew in over 1,200 guests to France for the event and had a traditional Indian wedding with all the rituals and traditions included. Dancers, singers, lavish food, and expensive gifts were exchanged during the wedding that went on for days in different locations because they promised their daughter a spectacular wedding, and they sure delivered. Kylie Minogue performed for the guests, and around $4 million were spent on champagnes and exclusive wines. Their son married Megha Mittal in 2000, and sources say their wedding was just as spectacular as his sister's. As you can see, opulence seems to run in the Mittal family. Number 3. He has donated millions of dollars to charity. Once you have a lot of money, it's only natural to give back and help others that need it the most. Because Lakshmi Mittal successfully landed among the richest and has a few million dollars to spare, he does have a soft spot for charity. In 2009 alone, India received roughly $7.9 billion in charity, which was the equivalent to about 0.6% of the country's GDP back then. A small part of that amount was due to Mittal's giving as well. So far, he has donated $20 million to the Great Ormond Street Hospital in London, $25 million to Harvard, $31 million to Burbank University of London, and many others through his foundation. Keep in mind, though, he's been living in the UK for about 20 years now, so his philanthropic acts are now widespread towards local issues and other causes as well. 
Number 4. He used to be the richest man in the UK Before the big recession, Lakshmi Mittal was making billions of dollars from steel and coal. After he bought his European rival Arcelor and a couple of other big plants, business got even bigger, and in 2005, Forbes magazine ranked him as the third richest person in the world. Then in 2007, he was considered to be the richest Asian person in Europe, and by 2012, he was the richest man in the UK, with a net worth of over $20 billion. Nowadays, he's the fourth richest man in the UK due to some challenging past years and scandals. There's a book written about him called Cold Steel, the multi-billion dollar battle for a global empire by Tim Bouquet and Byron Aussie, where they focus on the business side of Lakshmi Mittal, how he managed to own one of the most successful industries in the world, and the sacrifices that were put into it. The book is quite successful and highly rated, especially since the writers are well known in the industry as being unbiased, objective, and up to date with the whole merger of Arcelor with Mittal. Number 5. His net worth is now at $17.7 .7 billion, according to Forbes. Along the years, his fortune has had ups and downs, but it's safe to say that he's still one of the richest and well-known people in the world because lately, business is going uphill for ArcelorMittal. Actually, as of August 2018, Lakshmi Mittal is worth $17.7 .7 billion, which makes him the fourth richest man in India and among the richest people in the world. Due to his steel empire that now has plants all over the world, he's managed to propel himself and become a self-made billionaire. Even though his son is now the president of ArcelorMittal, Lakshmi is still very active and involved in other businesses as well. He's a member of the board of directors for Goldman Sachs, a member on the World Steel Association Executive Committee, and other institutions related to the steel industry or philanthropic ones. He was also included in Time Magazine's famous 100 Most Influential People in the World list a few years ago because, let's be honest, he really is one of the most important business figures in the steel industry. Number 6. Pollution from their plants turned the snow black. There's nothing worse than seeing multi-billion dollar companies make money by destroying our environment and the lives of those who live and work there. Steel plants are not very friendly with the environment, nor with the people employed. Working in such plants can be dangerous on the long term for humans and also for our planet. Some of Lakshmi Mittal's plants are not quite in line with the latest environmental laws, especially the one in poorer countries. For example, last winter in Kazakhstan, things were a little different in the city of Temirtau. Black snow poured over the city due to the high pollution from a steel plant located there. The air was so dense and full of metal particles that it could get blown away when the temperatures dropped. It mixed with the snow and turned black. The locals were outraged to see black snow, but the managers explained the discoloration of the snow was caused by a lack of wind, which would otherwise blow the pollution away. A classic move of blame shifting. But since they have over 200,000 employees in over 60 countries, we would all expect more of them. Number 7. His company was accused of slavery. When you run a multi-billion dollar business, it's hard to control all the aspects involved in it. In order to make money, a few cuts and sacrifices need to be made, and most times they are directly towards the workers and the quality. ArcelorMittal has been accused of not offering the right conditions for their workers, and even accused of slavery. Ten years ago, the company was making over $60 billion in revenue, but with the cost of a few lives. Some plants were facing major issues with safety, bad management, and even casualties. In Kazakhstan, 23 people died due to a gas leak, and others were facing impossible productivity targets and tough working conditions. In three years, the company lost 91 workers and was the subject of a criminal investigation, which was never concluded. Besides slavery and hard work conditions, ArcelorMittal is also guilty of radioactive waste, environmental hazards, and not paying their fines. Somehow, it looks like they can get away with everything. Number 8. He bought the Romanian steel industry with political power. 
Back in 2001, Lakshmi Mittal donated over $125,000 to the Labour Party in the UK, which can be seen as a donation, but it was in fact more like bribing. After his generous donation, Tony Blair went on and sent a letter of persuasion to the Romanian Prime Minister, blackmailing him with UE acceptance. He mentioned if they're not going to sell all the steel industry to ArcelorMittal, they will not enter the EU in 2007. Fast forward to present day, Romania is in the EU, and Mittal has under his corporation the most important Romanian steel plants. Business is business, and if you have money, you can get anything. Lakshmi used his political power other times as well, especially when he was on the verge of big acquisitions. Number 9. ArcelorMittal Collaborates with Artists Modern art can be weird, period. Museums are now filled with all sorts of crazy installations, paintings, and random objects that spark more controversy rather than contemplation. They do sell for millions of dollars, but are they really worth it? Some of them might actually be, since modern art installations contain metals, steel, or rare materials. ArcelorMittal is actually a famous collaborator for a bunch of artists that need steel structures for their art projects. They even supplied steel for an Antarctic supply research vessel with ice-breaking capabilities commissioned by the Australian government to broaden exploration of the Southern Ocean and Antarctica. They also provided steel for the ArcelorMittal Orbit Tower in the UK for the 2012 Olympics. Number 10. He bought a $128 million house in London. The steel magnate owns a $128 million home in the Kensington Palace Garden. The house once belonged to the Philippines Embassy and was sold to Mittal in 2008. The mega mansion is decorated with marble taken from the same quarry that supplied the Taj Mahal, so I guess we can simply call the house Taj Mittal. Besides the main residency in Kensington, Mittal also owns three other homes in the region worth over $500 million. A $30 million home in New Delhi, yachts, private jets, and luxury cars. What do you expect from a billionaire that spends $50 million for his daughter's wedding? Want some more billionaires? We have a full video on our channel about the richest man in India, Mukesh Ambani, and we bet you're dying to know just how much money he has and how he spends it. Number 11. He bought Arcelor Group for $33 billion. Before ArcelorMittal, the company was called Mittal Steel. The merger between the two happened in 2006 and took around two years to finalize. Mittal Steel paid $33 billion to buy the giant steel competitor Arcelor that was engaging in activities in Western Europe. Lakshmi Mittal used his friendship with former French President Jacques Chirac to buy Arcelor that was set to be acquired by the Russians from Severstal. He outbid them and managed to win the auction. The final merger was renamed ArcelorMittal with headquarters in Luxembourg, due to tax reasons of course, and produces around 10% of the whole steel in the world. Number 12. One World Trade Center was built using ArcelorMittal steel. Lakshmi Mittal's steel company successfully acquired the biggest plants in the world, and with that, amazing opportunities came from them. They now work and develop new projects in multiple countries. Their steel supports major constructions and even the rebuilt Tower 1 of the World Trade Center. After the terrorist attack of 9-11, America was mourning all the victims and the disaster of the two towers that were so emblematic for the city. As the years went by, the whole area was transformed into a memorial, and they built a new tower called One World Trade Center, or the Freedom Tower. For the new construction, over 20,000 tons of ArcelorMittal steel was used. The whole project took over eight years to finalize, and is now the seventh highest skyscraper in the world. Number 13. He sponsored a few Indian athletes for the Olympics. India invests a lot in football and cricket, but almost nothing into track, gymnastics, or basketball. When Lakshmi Mittal saw that Indians are not well represented in the Olympics, he decided to take action and sponsor a few athletes. He set up Mittal Champions Trust with $9 million to support 10 Indian athletes for the 2008 and 2012 Olympics. He also owns stakes in the Loftus Road QPR English Football Club because that's what English billionaires do.
Number 14. He owns two mega luxury buses. If he's not taking a private jet or a business class ticket, Lakshmi Mittal travels by his luxury bus. Yes, you heard that, a bus. He owns two mega buses decorated with the most expensive furniture and amenities. One of them even has a special garage fitted for an extra car. The buses are pretty much mini houses on wheels, resembling five-star hotel rooms with rugs and full bathrooms. This kind of bus normally costs around $100,000, but since he's decorated them to fit his own needs and his lifestyle, you can imagine this bus is now worth in the millions of dollars. Number 15. He was not admitted to college because he didn't speak English. Lakshmi Mittal came from a middle-class family, so he had a pretty good upbringing and good grades. Growing up, he was a regular child, but he encountered his first big problem when he wanted to attend St. Xavier College in Calcutta, but didn't get in. He persuaded the principal every day to let him study there, although most classes were held in English and he didn't speak the language. After a few weeks, the principal finally gave in and admitted him to the school because he promised to learn the language in less than a year. And he did it. After his BA, Lakshmi left college to start work, and it's now one of the biggest regrets that he didn't continue his studies further and took time to teach others. Now he can teach and inspire others to become successful billionaires just like him. All in all, it looks like we have a classic slumdog billionaire story. In spite of having a pretty good reputation and a private personal life, he does still have some secrets and dirty laundry in his closet. In spite of all that, we still admire Lakshmi. He built his business empire from nothing. His company puts food on the tables of thousands of people, and he helps constructions last throughout history. If you like him or not, it's all a matter of your choice. The facts, both good and bad, are here. Now, Aluxers, that's a wrap on Lakshmi Mittal. For sticking with us until the end, you know you get a bonus fact. Here it is. Number 16. He went to a restaurant for the first time at age 14. Lakshmi Mittal didn't grow up in a poor family, but he didn't experience a lot of things either. For example, even though his family used to go to the movies something like once a week, he didn't go to a restaurant until he was 14 or 15 years old. He went to Trinka's restaurant in Park Street area, Calcutta, and as he said in an interview, it was the most exciting thing he ever felt. Fortunately for him, he can now afford to go to any restaurant in the world, and that's the kind of luxury money can buy you. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxer. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. If you want more, we handpicked these videos you might enjoy, or head over to alux.com for the best in fine living content on the planet. Be a part of the largest community of luxury enthusiasts in the world and tell your story.